So you're thinking about moving down south to Florida. Well, it's not always sunshine in paradise here and I recommend you watch this video before making a quick decision that you might regret. There are definitely some negatives, especially if you're coming from New York, New Jersey, California, or even the Midwest. This is where the majority of the people that we work with are coming from. Now there's definitely a huge lifestyle and culture shock and it's vital that you know of these eight negative truths of living in Florida. That way you can be better prepared. If this is your first time here and you want to know everything about living in South Florida, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market in South Florida. My name is Jonathan. My team and I, we get calls and emails from people just like you every single day that are looking to make the move down here. We absolutely love being able to help. So if you're looking to make a move next week, next month, or even next year, we got you covered. Give us a call, send us a text or email to make your move here a reality. So let's get into it right now. Here are the eight main negatives of living in Florida according to someone who has lived here for over 30 years. Number one, high population. One of the worst things about living in the Sunshine State is the high population. Yes, there are some smaller sleepy towns. However, most of our main cities near coastal areas are populated with residents and tourists all year round since Florida is a known vacation spot. According to census.gov, we're the third most populated state with over 21 million people living here in 2021. Jacksonville takes the top spot with the highest population followed by Miami and then Tampa. And our population is still continuing to grow. The biggest boom came during COVID as more and more people fled states like New York and California, and they're still moving here every day to take advantage of the benefits of living here like no state income tax. Obviously you have the weather and plenty of other reasons that I'm gonna be mentioning in a separate video. But today, we're talking about why the overpopulation here is so annoying. I'm gonna start by saying it creates a ton of traffic. Now this combined with the awful drivers is a recipe for disaster, especially with I-95 being titled as one of the most dangerous superhighways in the country. According to CBS News, in fact, there's a specific mile stretch located in Fort Lauderdale along 595 that was reported to be 50 times more dangerous than any other area in terms of fatal car crashes due to close proximity to the airport. You have tourists driving 80 miles per hour in their rental cars, elderly drivers with poor eyesight, you have rain, ongoing construction, drunk drivers. I mean, it's not good. No wonder car insurance is so expensive here. Also a real lack of public transportation, which forces most people to rely on driving and owning a car. So what else does a high population contribute to? You have longer lines at grocery stores and gas stations, driving around to find a parking spot in popular areas, having to leave home earlier than expected to factor in traffic and parking availability crowded festivals and amusement parks where you're gonna be waiting in line outdoors and during the heat or rain for several hours. I mean, it's harder to make reservations at good restaurants and longer lines at Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts is a real thing. So if you're from up north, you're coming down here, the good news is that you're probably used to these things by now. At least you don't have to shovel snow. Number two, rain, tropical storms, and hurricanes. Now, we may not get snow, but we get plenty of rain here. Unfortunately, the rain can get in the way of major events and plans like beach weddings, outdoor festivals, and so on. Florida ranks as one of the most rainiest states in the US and cities like Miami can see over 66 inches of rain per year. But it's not the rain that concerns people about moving here. It's the big hurricanes. Typically, these hurricanes develop anywhere from, uh, say, June 1st to November 30th when the tropics are the most active, which also means severe thunderstorms, tropical storms, small tornadoes, and crazy lightning strikes as well. Now the good news is that hurricanes give you time to evacuate, thanks to the forecasting from meteorologists, but you can expect supplies and water and sometimes even gas to be out of stock days prior to the storm making landfall. Normally, unless you live in direct coastal areas which always get evacuated, most Floridians only evacuate for category three storms or greater. Personally, I evacuate in only those circumstances knowing that even the strongest roofs may not withstand winds of a category four hurricane. And also, I hate not having air conditioning for days at a time. 
Being stuck in a hurricane is not fun and major hurricanes can lead to widespread flooding, destruction, and unfortunately, fatalities. On the flip side, the good news is that we don't get snowstorms, earthquakes, landslides, volcanoes, or large tornadoes here. We get occasionally, you know, some of those little water sprouts. We do sometimes get wildfires, but not on the scale of states like California. I would say that hurricane risk and sinkholes are the biggest concern, with sinkholes being more common in central Florida and northwest Florida. There are some crazy videos that are circulating online of sinkholes sucking up entire homes and even an apartment building, which is like crazy. Again, these natural disasters are not as common as you think and many other states carry the same risks. In fact, some states don't have the same infrastructure to withstand these storms like Florida. New York and New Jersey is an example. In 2012, they were hit by Hurricane Sandy, which was only a category one hurricane but the damage was catastrophic, including the flooding of the subway systems and the, and the water went as high as six feet with many structures and homes destroyed. Hurricanes may be more common in Florida, but if you live in any of the states near the coast or the Gulf, it's always a possibility. So that leads me to our next not so great fact of life here in Florida, which is that these storms lead to a higher cost of homeowners insurance. Number three, high cost of homeowners insurance. Florida ranks as number 17 as being the worst in the country and it triples the national average. The fact that Florida is surrounded by water is prone to major storms on top of insurance fraud. Getting home insurance here is a mission in itself. So lower your expectation do, and do your research because if you're financing a home, you'll need insurance to close and also flood insurance if you're in a flood zone. According to CNN Business, the average Floridian paid $4,231 a year per policy in 2022, compared to a US average of 1,544. On top of that, several insurance companies pulled out of Florida entirely because they couldn't pay their debt. You have rampant roof replacement fraud, you have tort laws, and on top of that, you have the general risk of wind damage from storms that has played a large factor in all of this, which has left homeowners with few options outside of state-owned insurers like citizens. 39% of insurance policies in Miami-Dade County are with citizens, which is an insane number since the state insurer was meant to be a last resort option for those struggling to get insurance. To make a long story short, Expect to spend more on insurance here, which you need to factor in to how much you can afford when you're buying a home. Number four, alligators, dangerous wildlife, and creepy bugs. If you thought the Florida man was weird, you're gonna find the wildlife here even stranger. Straight out of what you would see on the Discovery Channel in some cases. The ECOS has us ranked as number four in the country for biodiversity, and we rank as number one for the highest number of invasive species due to our climate and oddly enough, being the top location for the exotic reptile trade. Fun fact, when Hurricane Andrew hit in 1992, many of these exotic pets and snakes escaped into the wild, moving to the Everglades, which is what started this entire mess. So let's talk about the fan favorites, alligators. If you move to Florida, assume that alligators live in all and any body of water, period. South Florida's Everglades in particular is the only place that you'll find both alligators and crocodiles, which can be found in the wild, which is absolutely terrifying. There's over a million gators here and you can find them anywhere from basking in your backyard lake, hanging out on a golf course, or even crossing the street. They aren't naturally aggressive towards humans, but they're still highly dangerous and they move quickly in both land and water if they view you as a threat or as a prey. Thanks to people feeding them, many have lost their fear of humans, so make sure you never feed a gator. There's always risk if you decide to ignore the beware of gator signs and take a dip in a random lake or canal. Definitely don't do that. I would say it's a risk to even walk at the edge of a lake with your dogs or kids. Now, although rare, a gator attack is always possible, so pay attention to your surroundings and stay at least 50 feet away if you do see one. Surprisingly, gators now even adapted to climbing fences, so there's that. You know, the gators don't really bother anyone if you leave them alone. In fact, I have an alligator that lives in the lake behind our house that we call Gary the Gator. He loves to bask in the sun near the edge of the lake. The minute that he hears me open the door, he actually just scoots and swims right into the lake. Now, if alligators don't scare you, Florida has an assortment of creatures I was talking about earlier that will. You have bears, sharks, coyotes, Panthers, deadly spiders like brown recluses and black widows, venomous snakes like water moccasins, anacondas and pythons, feral hogs, 
and plenty of bugs. I mean, you have bugs for days. Pick your poison. I'm not kidding. I mean, if you hate roaches, expect huge flying ones here. I mean, they're, you know, they're huge. And those are what we call palmetto bugs. But do you know what bothers me even more than alligators? The iguanas and the mosquitoes. First, you have the iguanas. They look like little mini dinosaurs and are all over the place here. They may look cool, but they're so irritating as a homeowner. They'll dig up your yard, poop everywhere, eat all if not most of your plants, damage roofs with their little claws, erode the sidewalks. I mean, they're just such a nuisance. I had to put up chicken wire around my the perimeter of my house to keep them from trespassing. There are ways to prevent them from driving you crazy. Also, this is a real thing. Beware of falling iguanas in the winter. You know, when temperatures drop too low, they go into a coma, they lose their grip, and they literally fall straight down from the trees. So I guess you could say it also rains iguanas here too. Another frustrating byproduct of the climate and humidity here in Florida are the mosquitoes. Like the alligators, they're everywhere, especially near bodies of water, and we have the most here in Florida, statistically speaking. If you have sweet blood like this guy right here, then get ready to be feasted on by these little bloodsuckers. Apparently they love old blood type and dark clothing, so make sure to stock up on bug spray, citronella, and bug zappers. You're gonna need it all if you live here. Many folks choose to screen in their pools and patios for this specific reason. And don't forget, mosquitoes are known for carrying diseases such as the West Nile virus, you have Zika, malaria. Try to stay away from swampy mosquito infested bodies of water if you can. Speaking of water, that brings us to the fifth worst thing about living here. Number five, awful tap water. Our state may be surrounded by water on all coasts and the beaches are amazing but we don't necessarily have amazing tap water. We are what is considered a hard water state. For those of you that don't know, hard water is concentrated with minerals like calcium and magnesium and comes from the ground. People that come from softer water states like New York and New England are generally disappointed with our water quality. Now I know you already complain about the bagels and the pizza, so here's another thing to add to that list. Although it's safe to drink and some even prefer hard water for whatever reasons, the taste is definitely not comparable to bottled water and has a yellow tinge to it. Contaminants in the water from sulfur, metals like copper and iron, chlorine, and other pollutants directly affect the overall quality. Most complaints that I hear from people not from here are that it tastes like a combination of chemicals, a little metallic, salty, or like how rotten eggs smell. I've been here so long, I wouldn't say it's that extreme, but I can tell you that I do have a water filter at home and tap is just not my preference. It can also make your hair and your skin feel dry and leave spots on your dishes. It's not the biggest deal and definitely doesn't outweigh the perks of living here, but I think it's important to be aware of if you are considering moving here, especially those of you from up north. Now luckily there are solutions such as water filters and purifiers that can be installed in your kitchen and even the entire home. Or you can use a Brita system or buy bottled water to drink instead of ordering tap when you're out and about. Also, another thing to make note of is that if you run water from your sink or even your sh when showering, you'll notice that the water is really not that cold, even on the coldest setting. So to some, that could be a good thing, but to others, that may be a negative. Number six, never ending heat and humidity. So in case you don't know, Florida ranks as the hottest state in the country and it's the second most humid state. Surprisingly, we were actually beaten by Alaska in terms of humidity. I mean, that's wild. Anyway, with that being said, be prepared for brutal summers in the 90 degree range and what feels like 80 degrees all year round if you do live in South Florida. Yes, you can get heat stroke here, so it's important to stay hydrated and yes, if you don't wear sunscreen, you can expect to burn. Fortunately, Central and North Floridians enjoy cooler weather than us down South and feel a bit more seasonality during fall and winter months. But for the most part, the state average temperature is about 72 degrees and whether you live in St. Augustine or you live in Fort Lauderdale, the sun's gonna be beating down on you and it will be hot most of the time. Okay, let's talk about other things that you may not realize about heat and humidity. People with specific hair types may find the humidity frustrating and you will have to tame the frizz with specific hair products and tools if that's something that bothers you. Fashion can also be challenging here for some and a breath of fresh air for others. I like that I can wear flip-flops and golf shirts all year round, but my wife likes to dress seasonally with boots and winter accessories. Unfortunately for her, those boots collect dust in the closet most of the year, except for about three days in the winter months when it drops below 60 degrees. As a parent, 
I can tell you how horrifying it is to receive an invite to a kid's birthday party that's outdoors during the summer. I mean, I literally just turn into a swamp within 10 minutes of arrival and I pray that it doesn't rain sideways. Number seven, homeowner and condo associations. Many home buyers I talk to that are relocating down to Florida are shocked to find out how many homes are governed by homeowners and condo associations. In fact, over 44% of Florida residents live in a homeowners association. Residents in these communities, they get perks like shared amenities with a community pool and clubhouse. You have community maintenance and landscaping. Some even offer cable packages and gated security. It really depends on the neighborhood and monthly HOA or condo fee. However, you could run into issues with an HOA in terms of approval for home customization, and it may be limited in terms of what type of roof tiles you can use or colors you can paint your home. A lot of people get annoyed by that. HOAs can also be strict with street parking, decorating your yard, how many pets you can own, vehicle restrictions, ensuring your home is pressure clean, or else you could be getting hefty fines and those annoying letters in the mail like I have. On top of that, an HOA can be poorly managed or corrupt and not use the fees that residents pay monthly to actually maintain the community, which I've unfortunately witnessed several times. Whether you love the structure of an HOA or you hate it, just know there are a lot of them here and it's important to fully understand the rules and regulations before buying a home in one of these communities. And finally, number eight on our list is poor healthcare. Now, according to the Harvard Business Review and the Commonwealth Fund, growing states like Florida, Georgia, and Texas continue to rank low in healthcare quality and I'm sad to say that we came in at 41 in the country. It doesn't get better in terms of affordability and accessibility because in 2020, we ranked as number 48, which is a really sad statistic since people are choosing not to get treatment due to high costs that are associated with healthcare and insurance. According to the Commonwealth study, employees in Florida paid more for insurance than anywhere else in the country. On average, employees that chose family coverage paid 30% of their premiums, which was about $7,674, making it the highest in the nation. Another factor to note is that there's a physician shortage and not enough doctors and nurses entering the market here to support the growing and aging population. Even after the pandemic, it's been especially challenging to get an appointment with doctors here. You could wait months to see specialists. Due to the great resignation and aftermath of the pandemic, many healthcare workers have actually left the industry. So if you move here, don't be surprised if standard access and quality of care is not up to your standards. The good news is that if you're a healthcare worker, there's an opportunity here to secure a job since it's a major industry and in such high demand. So that pretty much wraps up today's video, really on what we consider the main downside of living in Florida. I don't touch upon anything political here on my channel, so you can look up those stats like politics and crime rates and so forth on a hyper-local level online since they vary city to city here. But just like any place in the country, there's gonna be negatives. However, if you look at the positives and compare them to the negatives, you might find that for many, especially those up north or from California, the benefits of moving here supersedes many of the items on this list. And if you want a deeper understanding of the benefits of living in Florida, be sure to check out my video that explains all of the positives. I hope you found value in this video, and if you're thinking of making a move tomorrow, next week, or next year, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We'd love to make your next move a smooth one. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell for more content just like this video. Until next time, I hope to see you around.